Hello, my name is Stein Windig. Um, I will do a very quick demo of the depth function in Alpaca. So a depth map is usually something you would get when you're using 3D and you make a render. You can output a couple of different passes, like a depth pass or a normal pass or a clown pass. And these passes are used in compositing in the next step. Um, one of the nice things about Alpaca is that when you paint something or maybe you have done a 3D render, painted on top of it and changed the whole image, you're still able to get a depth pass and it's generating one now. I'll, um, I'll show you some of the tricks you can do with a depth pass because if you don't know about them, you might wonder what the hell should I do with this? Um, but they're actually super handy. So this is what it looks like and it's done a really nice job of it. Um, everything that's white is in, in front. Everything that's black is further away from the camera. And we're going to use this as a mask. So I'm tweaking it a little bit. You basically want your whites to be completely white and your black to be completely black. And I'm copying it to the channels and then I'm copying it again because I usually use a whole bunch of those. Then I'll invert it and I'll tweak it a little bit. So I'm going to use this mask to composite um, something in between the, the shapes. So I'm going to put a little cloud in there, for example. So now back in the layer panel, you can see that I have a selection. So I'm just making uh, a layer so that I can save the selection. And let's make some, uh, some mist. So you can see now that based on the, on the mask, it's just making the mist in the background. And this way you have, you have quite a lot of control over in which part of the Z axis in your image you want to composite new elements. And you can also keep editing the mask, of course. So now I, uh, now I have some kind of ground fog going on. And I think let's, let's do a little cloud. So I'm just bringing in a cloud. It's a little bit too white, so let's adjust it really quickly. And using the depth pass, I can composite this in between the front and the background. So I'm just using the same uh, mask as I did for the ground fog. Oops, there we go. So you can see a bit of the background shining through because the, the mask is gray there. So I can tweak the mask with a bit of levels. Now you can see that it has a nice kind of fall off going on. So that's one of the uses of a depth pass. But there is another one that um, I actually like a lot and I use a lot and that is to do color corrections based on the depth pass. So in reality if you look in the distance everything in the distance has less contrast than the things that are close to the camera and if you're outside they may be a little bluer as well. So you can use the depth pass to achieve either realism in your color corrections, or you can use it to do artistic stuff, basically. Just adjusting colors based on depth. And in my opinion, doing that nearly always makes the image a bit nicer. And it's just nice to have that control. So I'm taking away some of the green in the, in the background. And then when I'm finished with that, I want to make everything in the foreground a little have a little bit more red in the in the image so i just copied 
the whole layer reset the curves. Now I'm taking away some of the green. I'm tweaking the, the depth mask that I use because I want to keep that green in the middle. I just want to have the foreground slightly more red. There we go. It looks kind of like the sun is shining on that part of the image. And you can see that there's a huge difference with and without these color corrections. So I'm basically using a depth map in combination with the curves modifier is a very uh, is a very useful thing to do. It's very nice to have this power now. Of course, you can also use the depth map in, uh, let's say, the traditional way, which is using it to simulate a focal point as if you were using an actual camera. So when I do a lens blur here, it automatically takes the alpha, but you have to manually uh, specify it otherwise. And I can just blur the background using the depth map as a mask.